Hey, welcome back. I actually closed out, but as I was saying in Romans 5 8, what it says is it says, But God commends his love toward us, and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God commands his love toward us, and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind, you were on his mind, everyone in this world was on his mind and on his shoulders when he died on that cross. And he knew all the things we would do, all the evil things, all the blasphemy, all the gossip, all that evil stuff he knew we would do, but yet he loved us enough to die on that cross to give us forgiveness of sins. Wow. I gotta admit, for if I was, knew I was going to die, for someone who constantly hated me and didn't believe in me and said all manner of evil against me, I have to admit, I'd be kind of, you know, kind of thinking about it, like saying, no, I don't know if I want to die for them. You know, they're going to be kind of grateful. But it's, it's not, that's not the way Jesus thought. Jesus thought, I'm dying for them so they can have another chance to ask for forgiveness and get eternal life instead of damnation in hell. That's how much he loves us. It says, great, great love no man has it, one laying down his life for his friends. And the next verse I wanted to look at was actually, it was in Romans as well. It's in Romans 8, 38 through 39. In Romans 8, 38, says it says for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord wow nothing can separate us from the love of god nothing on this earth nothing in in the space nothing around us can ever separate us from god neither enemies nor death nor principalities, nor powers, nothing. Not the government can't, no one can. We're in God's hands as Christians. And nothing can separate us from his love. There's nothing we can do in this world that would ever make him stop loving us. And that's an amazing thing because I know, for me personally, I mess up a lot more than I'd like to admit. Um, but that goes for everyone. Everyone will mess up eventually. Growing up, I always thought the preacher was perfect and he never made a mistake, but... Uh, Ever, as I read the Bible more, I realized everyone makes mistakes. And um, through me talking to some preachers over the years, they've told me some mistakes they've made. And honestly, everybody makes mistakes. It's what you do afterwards that counts. Are you going to let it, let the guilt sink in, the conviction, not do anything about it, let the devil win? Or are you going to ask for God's forgiveness and, and believe he's going to forgive you and move on and try to become a better Christian? It's just a question you got to ask yourself when you sin. Am I going to listen, am I going to, listen to the Bible and ask for for forgiveness and repent or i'm going to listen to the devil and not say oh it's okay you know it'll be fine you're fine it's just small sin and go on because truth is when you do that you go down farther down the line and you've moved farther away from god because each time we get in our life separates us from god and that's not a good thing you know does it, like some people say oh it's just a little white lie it'll be all right that's not true lie a lie is a lie if you lie to somebody, it's just as bad as shooting somebody. It's just as bad as committing adultery. It's uh, with God, all sin is equal. No one sin is greater than the other. So we got to be really careful in what we listen to in the world and what they tell us. And the next verse I want to talk about was actually in First John four seven. In First John four seven, it says, "Beloved, let's love one another." For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. It says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And our God is a very loving God, and growing up as a Christian, it was hard for me to think that God loved me so much, you know. Because I, when I grew up as a young Christian, I always thought, man, I better not mess up. I better do everything right, or else, you know, God's not going to love me. And that's, that's the devil lying. That's not the truth. The truth of the matter is, God loves us so much. And even though we mess up, he's still going to love us. Of course, he'll convict us of our sin because that's him chasing us. That shows he loves and cares about us. It's like having kids. If you don't discipline them, you don't love them because you let them grow up and grow into whatever they want to. And you're not disciplining them and helping them go in the direction they need to go. For the Bible says, raise your child up in the way they should go and they won't depart from it. And that's very true. Because even still to this day, I remember something, some of the things my parents said and it's always stuck with me. And um, going on to the next verse. It's actually just two verses ahead. It's John, 1 John 4 9. And 4 9 says, And this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. 
Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a perpetuation for our sins. God sent Jesus to be a perpetuation for our sins. And what that means is God sent him to be, to die for us for our sins. He took all that upon his shoulders and went on the cross for us. While we were yet sinners. It just, it amazes me, God's love for us. That he would send his only begotten son to die for us when he knew he was going to die. Not many of us would send our child to a place where we knew they were going to get killed. More than likely, we'd keep him back and hold him back and say no, you know. But, of course, God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And he knew the outcome and he knew what Jesus would go through. Yet he allowed him because he loves us so much. And so does Jesus. I'll say... That is a is the main verse I want to talk about today about God's love. And if and it's something really interesting, if you want to look at it, is Psalms one oh seven one. And let me turn here. Psalms one oh seven one says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever, endures forever. You know, it says that three times in the Bible, the exact words. I believe it's in Chronicles, and the other two are in Psalms. I cannot remember which ones it is, but I definitely know the other two verses, that are, the three verses that are identical are both in Psalms, and then one's in Chronicles. And it says, get, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for, mer for his mercy endures forever. If you ever forget that, it's mentioned three times in the Bible. And if you think about it, Think about the Holy, the Holy um, Spirit. Think about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It's a Trinity, and it's three times in the Bible, and there's three of them. So I think that's really neat, because um, that just it just it can't be coincidental, you know. But I want to say that's the verse I want to read today about the goodness of God and how His love for us just outweighs anything else in the world. For it says in the Bible, He sticks closer than a brother, and that's true. We can go to Him anytime we need Him. We, we could be in Asia. And go to him he'd be right there we could go to africa and he'd be right there we can go to europe there's no place you can go where god is not even in your darkest times he's always going to be there and always going to be willing to lend a ear to listen to you i don't say that's that's just it's amazing because every day i talk to god and he talks back to me and it's amazing some things he tells me you need to do this you need to talk to this person some things he says you're wrong you need to apologize and honestly i've never ever told God no on an apology. I've asked him, why do I have to do this? But sometimes he'll give you an answer, and sometimes he won't, and that's okay, because you just got to learn to accept that God's ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and he knows best for us. But overall, I hope you have a great Friday, and it's kind of rainy out, but it's still a blessing to be alive today. And thank you guys, and I hope to talk to you later.